First of all, like, comment, and subscribe. This is Witchblade number one. They're up to issue 15, but number one has an interview with the writer and the artist in the back. And this is my second shot at this uh, review. The first one came off incredibly harsh. <laughs> so I'm going to try to be a little bit nicer this time. Okay. The way you look colors your perspective on the world. It, it, it colors your writing. It colors your art. What you put out in the universe is what you you get reflected back a lot of the time. And, um, you know, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at this is. I think this is the artist, and this is the writer with her problematic glasses and her five earrings in her ear. Um, yeah, okay. I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. The cover, don't let the cover fool you because, uh, of course, the cover has very little to do with the uh, interior art. This is the comic book. It is gray and dreary. It has what looks to be a transgender woman, man, transgender something, uh, with a long, long face and a flat pectoral muscles. Even though she probably just got out of bed, she's wearing a nightie, and she has absolutely no breasts whatsoever. Of course. Uh, these images are not compelling. It shows someone who is depressed, and everything is gray and dreary, and she's popping pills in the snow. And the main character is meh, blah, shapeless and formless, void, one of the ancillary characters has some appeal to her, but the main character does not. Why? I don't know. This is... Get in. This should be called Depression, the comic book. This is it. This is... She's sad and she's in a hot tub, a bathtub. She's washing off imaginary blood. Uh, another woman is a victim of male violence, of course, because men are canceled. And they're in the snow, talking, in snow, bleeding, um, in the gray cinder block walls, being dreary, probably reading feminist propaganda. And uh, more gray backgrounds, snow, talking, everything's... Is this hell? Yes, for a comic book, this is comic book hell. This is where comic books go to die. This is not a comic book. This is two depressed women getting together um, to draw a breastless, hips, hipless, formless woman with zero appeal. If you're going to draw women who look like this, 120 pounds, why don't you just use male characters? This is the last page, last panel. Something happens. She, this tall, skinny, breastless, hipless person who is gray and dreary fights some kind of creature. Who? Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure an evil man is doing something evil, and she has to save a woman from an evil man because men are trash. Okay, so this happens at the very end of the book. The next, the next cover is you know the. Uh, just to entice you, to, to grab you. Does this cover entice anyone? No, of course not. Listen, listen, feminists. Even women like attractive women. Women like big boobs and hips and sexy lips and cheekbones and jawlines and whatever. They like, they like sex appeal, sex appeal. Attractive people attract people. That doesn't attract anyone. That's just... Just a, what looks like a man. It looks like a transgender person wearing her raincoat. And this is the interview with these two problematic women. Two years after Wishblade wrapped up its 20-year run, it makes its triumphant return with flying colors, a familiar setting, a kick-ass lead, press F to doubt, and a whole new creative team taking up the gauntlet. These two women are taking up the gauntlet. But don't worry, diehards. Uh, Kitridge and Ingrata Granata are going to take care of this beloved series. 
For those new to the Witchblade universe, it's a character-driven story set in an urban fantasy that blurs the line between mysticism and morality. A character-driven story means not much happens. We just went through the whole of issue one, and not much happens. <sighs> and, but they want your $4. See, this is something with these comic books. If this thing sold for two twenty-five, maybe you'd have an argument. But for $4, or whatever it's selling for, no. Uh, with a 20 year history to live up to, how are you two pushing the legacy forward? <laughs> I feel like we have a unique opportunity to offer a modern feminist take on the book, both by respecting the soul of the source material and by introducing a new set of characters and a new updated story that will appeal to image current audience. I'd read Witchblade on and off as a teenager, it means she didn't read it, but I haven't kept up with the book as an adult, so I'm coming to it with totally fresh eyes. Okay, so you're saying you're completely unfamiliar with the uh, property. And not only that, you want to put a feminist perspective on it. That's why you're selling 5,000 issues. It's pretty much everything I like in a comic, uh, except you didn't read it. You said you read it on, on and off, and you didn't read it as an adult. So it, if it's pretty much everything you like in a comic, then why weren't you reading it? Oh no, you might be a fake geek girl. Even though you have glasses, and I'm sure you have a untouched comic book collection. A flawed protagonist, mystical backdrop for the story, kick-ass world building. I didn't see any of that. And a ton of directions to go in as the project evolves. I've never worked on an established property before, just my creator-owned projects. And so it's a new frontier for me personally, and I'm looking forward to learning as I go. I wonder what your projects were. Probably lesbian kittens learning how to knit. I'm a fan of Witchblade, so when I was called to draw it, I was shocked and completely overwhelmed. Such an honor for me to work on this series for so many reasons. I read all of Catelyn's pitches, and I've been falling in love with it since then. She's an amazing writer, blah, blah, blah. She just goes on to kiss her butt. She's probably happy to have a job, even though they're selling not many issues. <laughs> what will diehard fans and newcomers look forward to? Will it pick up at right after issue 185? This Witchblade is a total reboot with a new heroine, new continuity, and a new backstory. Okay, so you're changing everything. Fine, fine. I'm sure you can do it successfully. Basically, the previous volume is Patrick Stewart's Star Trek, and our book is J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. Same source material, totally new take on the interpretation. I had a really great experience reworking the existing world to fit in with our new cast and the story we're telling. Um, don't get full of yourself. You're not selling many copies at all. And to compare yourself to... Anyone, Star Trek, is asinine. I don't want to do any spoiling. We hate spoilers, right? You got 5,000 fans reading your book. Nobody cares. I think the fans will be greatly surprised, all 5,000 of them. It's all different, and it's all great. Well, it's not that great, because if it was great, it would sell. Since there are 185 issues of Witchblade, I imagine y'all, please don't use that word, we're not short of reference material. Was there a lot of research that went into writing and drawing this new iteration? What are their influences? Blah, blah, blah. I read up on what happened with the previous iteration. Okay. That sentence stopped me in my tracks. When she says, I read up, that doesn't mean, oh, uh, there's 185 issues, so I went online, I, um, I sub, you know, bought the issues online or I subscribed to a service so I could read all 185, or I bought back issues, or I got the issues somewhere, I read all 185. 185, 185 comics is not a lot to read. You read it with a notebook, you take notes, you figure out the character elements, the story elements, the motivations, who are your characters, what universe you're in. It's 185 is not that much. I mean, I don't know how long it would take. A, a couple weeks, maybe. Maybe just a week. So she's saying she read, like, a, a wiki? She didn't read the issues. She read up on the issues. Mostly so I could figure out how we could make our version stand alone. But as you said earlier, you're not making it, you're not making it anything like the prior issues. I gathered a lot of photo references to Roberta, so we were discussing new design for the Wishblade and our main cast. Visually, the comics is all the uh, artists, and she does an incredible job. Uh, the artist says, as I said, it's all different. We'll be able to see a newer contemporary Witchblade. Except your newer contemporary Witchblade doesn't sell. Caitlin gave me all the references I needed. It's still set in New York. It wasn't difficult to find actors' pictures for characters. So you found 
apparently transgender people to be your main roles. The history of Witchblade has mostly been defined by men. How do you think... Well, you know what? Who's who's your comic book audience? Who buys comics? 95% of the people who buy comics are men and boys. So it should be defined by men. It should be a male industry. If 95% of the audience is male, it should be a male industry. And if you're female working in that industry you need to be very very aware of who your audience is it's men you're selling to men not to women the problem with these people is they say well we want to sell to women too we want to grow our our female audience so what they do is they cut out the male audience or they cut it drastically and they increase their female audience so instead of selling a hundred thousand ninety five thousand to men they're now selling ten thousand but half to women And they view that as an accomplishment. Okay, it's been defined by men. How do you think your perspective will help flesh out this universe? Her answer? Fewer boobs. Fewer boobs, laughs. Fewer boobs. (sighs) Why? I think the new Witchblade will have a different reading key. We have a simpler protagonist, a common woman you could meet in the street. A woman has to fight with personal demons as much as real ones. Female point of view in this kind of story helps to depict a much stronger introspective and emotional side of the character. That's not what comic books are all about. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe Batman or something is kind of emotional, introspective. But there's a lot of going on. There's a lot going on in Batman, and the art is top notch, and the characters are compelling and attractive. And this comic is everything the opposite of that. And that's why it's not selling. Female creative teams are unfortunately the minority right now in comics. Yeah, because it's, it's a male audience, a male industry. Females are not selling as well as males. I'm really pleased to be half of one on this book. I'm even more pleased to be a woman writing a female-led comic drawn by a female artist. Wishblade has always been a comic, in my opinion, has tried to present a strong heroine, but didn't have much actual input from a woman. I'm definitely interested in continuing to p- portray a heroine who is strong but human, a fully fleshed person with both good and bad sides, because I feel that's the greatest service I can do as a writer. Okay, this, she's just absolutely lying, because you're not going to make a female character flawed in any way, or any, any way whatsoever. She's not going to fail. You'll give her these fake character defects, where she's moody and gloomy and introspective, because the writer is that. But you're not going to have her. Uh, you're not going to have her screw up like uh, uh, an Iron Man or a Spider Man would screw up, and then have a redemption arc because it's a female character. It's absolutely going to be a Mary Sue. Uh, Witchblade's been around forever, at least as far as anyone in our book can tell. Okay. Anyway, um, this just goes. Oh, okay. The original Witchblade gauntlet accompanied outfit is unequivocally famous. It was a sort of parasitic armor that wrapped around the host's body, creating a highly sexualized look, emblematic of the 90s, of course, but also acted as a character in itself. How did y'all work together to update Witchblade? What did you know? What did you know you wanted to keep and what were you most excited about? concept of living armor and the symbiotic relationship to Wishblade with its host were really fascinating to me. Sort of a Kids 22. Fight against the forces of evil. Uh, but the, the, we wanted to update the design to divorce it from the heavy male gaze element of the original. We wanted to convey strength and feminine power in the aspect of a warrior, and we actually ended up covering the host entirely. You wanted to avoid the male gaze... So you drew a woman without any female features. Then you get put her in a costume that covers her up entirely because you want smaller boobs. Avoid the male gaze. You've covered her up. So who's reading this comic? Who's buying this comic? Oh, it sells 5000 right? So nobody's buying it. Nobody's reading it. Anyway, um, they go on just kissing each other's ass for several pages. Just stroking each other, blowing blowing smoke, and the comic doesn't sell very well because, you know, they're um, these people shouldn't be in comics anyway, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next episode